Hi, this is Joe Weinstein from Legal Talk. When you're looking to have an affair, do you look at the company, are they classy, or are they creating jobs? Well, today we're going to find out. We're here today with uh, Noel Biederman, who is the president of Ashley Madison, one of the foremost classy shops to have an affair. To talk to you about how to have an affair with class, as opposed to unclassy affairs. Noel, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Stuart. Can you tell me a bit about yourself and about Ashley Madison? Sure. So I'm a former sports attorney turned, I suppose, the king of infidelity, right? We are now helping 13 million people around the globe pursue what would make them happy, which at this time and place is an affair. So the Law Society of Upper Canada would be very proud of you. Well, they should be. They truthfully should be proud of a serial entrepreneur that's employing hundreds of Canadians, exporting a product around the globe, uh, you know, bringing millions of dollars to an economy. The number of lawyers I engage is, <laughs> is extraordinary. So yeah, I, I think they should be proud of it, despite the notion uh, that somehow I'm in a tainted business. I think that's for people to judge themselves. I, I think that's a, a harsh categorization. Let's show one of the commercials that you use to promote Ashley Madison. Jackie, is everything all right? No. I just found out my husband's cheating on me. Welcome to the club. Isn't it time for AshleyMadison.com? Yeah, as you know, because we're on the internet, we had to show one of your more tame commercials. When do you think you're going to get a bit more racy? Yeah. All right. Truthfully, we got, I think, more pushback at the fact that we had a capybara in that ad than that Savannah Sampson took her shirt off. But yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, to me and to, and to people, the viewers watching, everybody, like, they talk about sort of the adults in the bedrooms. People pretty much have to have their own choice. Um, I want to talk about other things, but I mean, one of the things that no one ever really asks you, or maybe they do, the amount of jobs you're creating. Are you creating real jobs with benefits? Are, are people actually, like, can they come in and be working full time and be making a salary working for your company? You know, Ash Mass employs 125 people in Young and Eglinton and, you know, the city of Toronto. It's not cheap rent. Uh, we probably pay on a pay scale for our developers, our customer care, way above everybody else. We're a very intimate group, and so that's part of how we attract talent to this company. We are trying to do something unique. We are trying to export a digital product. Canada is much more well known for an importation, right? An importation mentality of eBay Canada, Facebook Canada, Yahoo Canada. Very little innovation when it comes to a digital economy. We don't have our own Silicon Valley. And so Avid Life Media, our parent company, Ashley Mass in particular, is unique in that we're taking this product around the globe. And I think it's something we should all be proud of. And most important, like I said, it's a, it's a source for employing Canadians. Now, in terms of if you look at the, the whole aspect of companies, real companies, if I was a customer, and I had a, a uh, problem with getting poor customer service. Do you have an internal discipline problem? Like any other company, if an employee is not meeting your standards, do you have a way of disciplining? Or is it just this, this whole concept of, well, you're in an infidelity market, uh, anyone there can do what they want and treat people like garbage? No, I think we probably take the exact opposite approach. We already know that our customers are in a highly sensitive place and time in their lives. And so we put people through a real screening process before we employ them. And we explain to them that, hey, you're going to be working in something that's very sensitive and unique. And we train them you know, to the nth degree so they know how to handle those customers. And if, for whatever reason, we deal with an internal employee issue, you know, if they're not cutting the mustard for whatever reason, we have strict probationary periods. We'll move them out of the group. We'll try and better... Um, you know, inform them, educate them, get them prepared, but ultimately if they can't service our customers, they, they can't be a part of our company. When you look at some of the other things that Ashley Madden is looking to do, what are some of the up and coming 2012 sites or projects that you're developing and what do you do now besides Ashley Madison out there in the marketplace? You know, we're constantly expanding. We're looking at where else this behavior pattern is underserviced or doesn't, you know, have the benefits of an Ashley Madison type service. And so that could be markets in Asia. That, that could be opportunities out of India. We're, we're looking at all those kinds of continued expansion. And I think also what we, we've come to learn with Ashley Madison is that the road less traveled 
has actually traveled quite often. And so if traditional companies, if the legal advice they get is, oh, don't venture there, that's risky, we're happy to venture there. We think as long as you're doing something that is legal, even if it is controversial, we have a lot of appetite for that. And so whether it's building a same-sex site of man crunch or whether it's building a service for older women who want to date younger men called cougarlife.com, we're happy to venture into those places and we'll worry about the potential obstacles to marketing those services as they come. Let's talk about why does traditional media sort of the first thing they ask you is how dare you this or how dare you that as opposed to looking at the contributions that you're making to a society? I think there's a narrative out there. It's an unfortunate narrative that kind of says you have to live your life this way, right? And this is the only way you should be doing it. It seems to be, you know, in intuitively false, right? For anybody who's got any sort of modicum of in intelligence, we, we always look over our, so our shoulder and say, wow, we were really being intolerant. That was a lot of ignorance we did and, 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 and practiced long before. And so there's no doubt that there's been an evolution around a desensitization around premarital sex and, uh, and same-sex relationships. And so right now, monogamy is kind of going through this change and, and people are having trouble digesting the fact that the majority of relationships um, have monogamy attached to them. And whether it's presidents or athletes or entertainers or your friend, you know, we tend to want to judge these people without really walking a I minute in their shoes. And so we should probably stop doing that. Are there times of the year where you find that you're having more customers or do you have a consistent amount? Yeah, you know, people want to blame Ashley Madison for infidelity, right? As if I could do that, as if I could sit down with you today and say, oh, Stuart, you're married, you know, I, I'm going to convince you to have an affair. That's ridiculous. Nobody's that pliable. They're definitely not going to be persuaded to have an affair in a, with a 30-second TV commercial, right? Let alone a one-to-one -one conversation. And so my role in the affair, if you will, is to cannibalize the behavior, is to say to people, if you've decided to do that, don't pursue it in the workplace. That's where it's going to end badly. You're going to end up risking your job. You know, don't do it on a singles dating site with an unsuspecting single person. That could lead, lead, lead to them believing there was some sort of torrent that took place, like they were, they, they were persuaded to do something under false pretenses. If you're going to have an affair, you know, do it in this universe and, 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 and do it where everybody knows what they're getting into. What kind of charity work does Ashley Madison do or, or any initiative that you're going to be taking in the near future? You know, I think our focus is on sociology, right? The sociology of what is the reality of an affair. And so we have spent literally, uh, probably at this point, hundreds of thousands of dollars on research, research that lets us better understand the true human behavior pattern out there. You know, it might shock a lot of people that you porn today is going to get 10 times the traffic of the New York Times, but that's the reality. The reality is that more people are going to go to strip clubs today than are going to go see, you know, plays on Broadway. That's the reality. And so we should start trying to spend time understanding causation. You know, while I don't have a PhD, I, I've become a real world doctorate of understanding infidelity because I'm able to look at uh, infidelity at its genesis, as people self-publish who they are and why they're coming to our service. And I think that's really robust data. And so we're committed to constantly evolving that. So in general, you're making it easier for people to have infidelity or an affair based on their decision that they've made. So what are some of the things that they would see on the site to make it easier for them? Are there things that they can do? Are there tips? Are there, are there ways to make? Because any experience, like when you're purchasing, how do you make them feel comfortable about that? Yeah, you know, I think one of the biggest things when we were creating Ashley Madison is we viewed an affair as having two critical components, meeting someone and not getting caught. That's why people tend to pursue an affair. And so we were very focused in particular on part two, the digital lipstick that people left behind, you know, a text message, a voice message. How do we mitigate that? And so we created a credit-based system that allows you to communicate with other members with no ongoing costs. We created things like a panic button, a way to delete not just your account, but the messages you sent to other people, the ability to mask or, or, or privately label your photograph so it's only released one-to-one -one versus the whole community. And then critically, we didn't bill you under Ashley Madison, right? <laughs> we found a way to make sure that, you know, any kind of trace of this would be um, uh, as invisible as you were intelligently going to pursue. If you go and leave your computer open, your iPhone app open or whatever, sure, then your partner might find out about it. But if you really approached it from an intelligent standpoint, there was a great chance you wouldn't get caught. 
Well, in today's society of being more aware as to who your partner is, I know that this whole stigma that you go into a drugstore and, and everyone would stare at you when you ask for condoms, but now people see condoms as being the right thing to do. So it sounds like the whole industry, I mean, if you look at, and forgive me, it's either San Bernardino or San Fernando, which is the porn capital. San Fernando, yeah. San Fernando. But once again, they have high standards. So where does Ashley Madison fall into high standards for, say, the industry in a whole? And, and uh, where would you put yourself as being a leader? Are there any competitors? Where would you place yourself? Well, first and foremost, I think we invented the phrase married dating. Before Ashley Madison, I don't think anybody in the English language ever used that phrase. Like Hanukkah, we, like Hanukkah Bush. <laughs> we were, yeah, we were, trying to we, were, we were trying to describe the service in a succinct way, and that's how we ended up doing it. And I think now, are there millions of imposter sites out there for sure? But the Internet is really about, uh, to a huge degree, monopolies. Um, monopolies that end up existing because people want something com comprehensive. And so if I truly have a real competitor, it's Facebook. If we sat down with a number of divorce attorneys in Toronto, I think that they would tell you ad nauseum the amount of pleadings that uh, regard to this Facebook happened here or there or whatever, probably a lot less around Ashley Madison because we're designed to be discreet. Facebook's designed for the exact opposite. It's, it's to broadcast. And so that's the wrong place, the exact wrong place to pursue something. Um, like an affair. And I think from our corporate perspective, not only are we innovative on the product side and on our marketing side, I think to the point where, you know, a ton of companies would love to emulate what we do, but it's also just how we approach our customers, right? And I think that's just a critical lesson that a lot of internet uh, organizations have learned. It's, it's not easy to bring e-commerce online. And when you do, you know, that customer is really valuable to you. you. You have to, no matter what their question, approach it as if it's the most intelligent question you ever heard. So it sounds like you, you've making people more comfortable in terms of polar infidelity. You're providing us some customer service. Well, of course, money is always an issue when anybody thinks about any product or service. So how are you protecting my financial information when I'm going to your site and making a purchase? That's a great question. Ultimately, that was an element of the business I didn't want to assume. Uh, I looked at it that and said, listen, you know, we do have hundreds of employees here. We're going to screen them to the nth degree, but the temptation might be there. You know, there's a million and one hackers out there. Why don't I just look to the organizations who all they do all day long is protect credit card data and work with credit card data. And so ultimately, I chose to outsource that partnership. And so I never even know who signs up to my service. It's anonymous to me. I never know the purchase history. I never see the credit card information, and I'm content with that. And is there anything else you'd like the public to know about Ashley Madison, where you're going, what your thoughts are, and other products and services that they should look up for you? You know, I, I think in the end, uh, uh, love it or hate it, you have to come to believe that you, you know, affairs would happen whether we were here or not. And so is society not better off by aggregating this behavior pattern into a community of like-minded adults where everybody knows what they're getting into? I, for one, would argue um, that, that we definitely are. But I think the real way to look at this is that, you know, everyone's responsible in society for moving it forward into a healthier direction, and that's including our legislators or the legal minds behind it, that, that's our artists, but it's also our entrepreneurs. And so right now what I'm doing is maybe pushing boundaries, but it's, it's good for our society. It's good for us to reevaluate. We do know we have a cataclysmic problem on our hands. Couples get divorced more often they stay together, and there is a real percussion for divorce. It is something we're just learning to study because it's really only upon us for one or two generations, but children raised in single-parent households just have less opportunities. They do have more trouble with drugs and alcohol, legal issues, those kinds of things. And so ultimately, if we have a problem and a, uh, and a mushrooming problem, we have to get to the causation of it. And I think you know, that's part of what I'm trying to contribute. So it sounds like you're sort of trying to save marriages as well because people are more dynamic to discuss it. I, I am positive that if you look at the data out there, couples in open relationships that have decentralized uh, monogamy are more successful, at least if you define success as not divorcing, and I don't know that's a good way to define anything as not failing, but you know, those couples are more successful, and so we know we have a problem. Um, we just don't know how to address it, and so I, as an entrepreneur from that direction, I'm trying to in my own little way. Uh, Josh, is there any way of running the commercial one more time, uh, or is that, is that too sort of quick, sudden? Okay, we're going to run the commercial one more time, and then um, we'll come back and, and thank you. So here we go. Jackie, is everything all right? No. I just found out my husband's cheating on me. Welcome to the club. Isn't it time for AshleyMadison.com?
Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, you promised me you'll get me a more racy commercial next time we have you on. For sure. We prevail upon you to come on in future episodes. This is Stuart Weinstein. We had Noel Biederman from Ashley Madison, Presley of Ashley Madison, Man Crunch, and other prestigious products in the uh, market. If you're looking to invest, advertise, sponsor, certainly as we build on the viewership, Legal Talk's your one-stop place for that. You can reach me on Twitter at Legal, also LegalAll.info, and of course 416-224-0200. Of course, we're broadcasting live all over the world. I'm Stuart Weinstein. We'll be back in a moment with the uh, wrap-up and the Oscars and who's going to be on ABC uh, February 26th to discuss that. Stuart Weinstein, Legal Talk, thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Stuart Weinstein. Well, we're doing the wrap-up last today because we had the Law Society of Upper Canada on our first episode, and then we had Ashley Madison in our second episode. So I wanted to talk about the Oscar nominations so people know where to watch and what's uh, up and coming. So for Best Director, or we'll just put them in the, in the list that they came out, Best Director, um, Michael Hazard is Vicious from The Artist, Alexander Payne from The Descendants, Martin Scorsese from Hugo, Woody Allen from Midnight in Paris, and Therese Malick from The Tree of Life. Next is... Best Actress, My Viola Davis from The Help, Rooney Mara, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Meryl Streep, The Iron Lady, Michelle Williams, My Week with Marilyn, and Glenn Close from Albert Nobbs. For Best Actor, George Clooney, The Descendants, Jean Dujardin, The Artist, Brad Pitt, Moneyball, Gary Oldman, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy, and Damien Bashir, A Better Life. Best Picture, The Artist, The Descendants, Hugo, The Help, Midnight in Paris, Moneyball, Warhorse, War Horse, The Tree of Life, and Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. So, basically watch and make sure, and you can stay with us as far as the upcoming special Oscar episodes that we'll be having here on Legal Talk, part of the All Talk TV network. Now we want to pull up the... Uh, Big Calculator, which is uh, sponsored by Staples. Staples, when you have a calculator that works, can you see that? Am I? <laughs> Wait a second. There we go. Now, can we just get a close-up of that Staples so I go after them later for advertising? There we go. Beautiful. Okay. So let's just pull in some numbers here. If you look at the top of the screen, um, just just get that. Also, okay. There we go. Okay. So. How many jobs has the government of Ontario created uh, over the past year? Zero. In fact, there's a minus button here. Minus zero. Minus zero. Well, the government of Ontario, they're supposed to be providing education. They're supposed to be providing jobs, employment, and assistance into the economy. But what are they doing? So the goal is to talk about that on Legal Talk. Let's pull up some other things. What are the government of Canada doing to promote jobs? Double zero. Up. Oh, double zero. Look at that. You just go on zeros forever. And we'll do one more as we wrap up today on Legal Talk, and then we'll talk about some of the upcoming episodes. Uh, what is the best show and the best Legal Talk network and the best talk te TV network on the planet. And where is it ranked? Number one. Absolutely. Legal Talk and All Talk TV as they move towards uh, high definition status and millions of viewers. There you go. So let's talk about a few of the uh, upcoming episodes that we're going to be seeing. Once again, the December 2012 is the $1 million payout. On the 27th, which is coming up this week, we're going to have a sports attorney to be discussing that information. And the second show is a surprise. Woo, surprise. Look at those amazing graphics when I say that. One more time in slow motion. Woo, surprise. That was pretty amazing. Uh, once again, 
If you have any issues or concerns, any videos you'd like to send in, please do it now to Legal Talk. If you're looking to sponsor, invest, advertise, as we increase the viewership, you can reach me at Legal on Twitter, www.legalall.info, and then of course 416-224-0200. Of course, Legal Talk is one show as part of the prestigious All Talk TV network. You can reach them online at www.alltalktv.com as we move towards uh, building the, uh, the viewership towards uh, over uh, one or two million. I think we're, we've, we've just capped at one million and we're moving towards that. So Stuart Weinstein, we look forward to seeing you on the 27th. Happy Oscars. And this is Legal Talk. Mm -hmm.